Amen. How many know there's power in the name of Jesus? Oh, you really ought to know that if nothing else. How many of you really know that there's power in the name of Jesus? Yes. That's good news. Yes, it is, Janika. Yes, it is. Yes. When you're lonely and your heart is filled with despair, remember God cares. And when you're in doubt and you can't find your way out, he will see you through. Yes, he will. Just call Jesus, 
Jesus, Jesus, Jesus, I love Jesus, I love Jesus. Do you love him? Jesus, 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 my way over. Jesus, my way through. Jesus, in the morning. Jesus, Jesus, in the noonday. Jesus, in the midnight hour. Still Jesus, 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 at the name Jesus. Hey, demons. Tremble, Jesus, 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 I love to call him, it's Jesus, all day long, Jesus, 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 my everything, Jesus, my, my regulator, Jesus, my healer, Jesus, 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 do you know him? Jesus, 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 power, Jesus, power, Jesus, power. Jesus, power, Jesus, in the palm of his hand, power, Jesus, 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 my keeper, Jesus, my lover, Jesus, my everything, Jesus, 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 excuse me, y'all, but it's Jesus. Jesus, I can't help myself. Jesus, Jesus, life changing. Jesus, 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 in the atmosphere. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, my all in all, Jesus, my Alpha, Jesus, my Omega, Jesus, the beginning, Jesus, the end, Jesus, do you know him? Do you know him? Do you know him? It's Jesus all day long. It's Jesus, Jesus. Just Jesus, yeah, hallelujah. Jesus, 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 You ought to feel that, Jesus. What's his name? What's his name? What's his name? What's his name? It's Jesus. 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 Say, ooh, 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 ooh,
Amen. It's Jesus. Hallelujah. It's something about that name. Jesus. It's something about that name. Jesus. The lily of the valley. Jesus. Emmanuel. Jesus. My God. It's something about that name. Because there's no other name by which man, man might be saved except the name of Jesus. Let's give God some praise. For he's worthy. Yes. He's worthy. Yes. He's worthy. He's worthy. What a God we serve. Jesus. Hallelujah. We come to lift up the mighty, magnificent, off the chain name of Jesus the Christ. Praise God. We are excited to be in the presence of God. Just go ahead and praise him. He's worthy. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We are still in revival. God has blessed us in a significant way. Let's give God some praise for the revival that we've had and been experiencing. Uh, God is doing a tremendous work uh, in this place, and, and I am just, uh, just excited to be able to be a part of and witness through the power of God how he has manifested himself in such a significant way uh, through the power of the Holy Spirit in this place. Uh, God has just tremendously, he showed up and showed out in so many ways in which so many people have been blessed by the word and where God is leading this church. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm having the best time of my life as a pastor serving this congregation uh, because of what I'm seeing God doing. And it is fun. Uh, you know, it's, it's something that's amazing when you can go to uh, the place uh, that you were you employed that you love to go to every day uh, that it doesn't even feel like work. I don't think I have a job uh, because the, what I do, I get so much joy out of what I do. It just feels like it's an extension of who I am and what I do. And so I love to be able to serve God's people and to be able to preach his word and to be in the presence of other brothers and sisters in Christ to where we give each other encouragement uh, because there's nothing like having somebody who has your back and you know they have your back. And that's one of the things that we know as uh, families of faith, the family of faith and being part of this body of Christ that we have each other's back and support and it means so much as we experience the power of God. And uh, I thank God. Let's give God some praise for this wonderful choir. Amen. They are doing their thing. They are doing their thing. And this wonderful band over here. Amen. They just second to none. Amen. And, and we thank for the new addition, Brother Tim Stringer. Amen. And those bongos. He's getting down over there. And... Uh, he, he said, Pastor, this is something I want to contribute. It's a gift to me, and I want to give the gift that God has given me to the church. And so uh, he just get, came on, volunteered, and continued each week. And Brother Stephen Frazier, all these brothers, and, and Brother Faithful committed, ultimate committed, uh, Brother Easley, just every Sunday faithful uh, in God. And we thank God for him. And uh, they're just doing a tremendous job. And and we can't say enough about our new minister of music. Amen, Brother Darren Johnson. I mean, just came right on in. And it's like he, he, he's, he's been here all his life. He came, stepped right on in. And, and uh, I thank God for that. And, and that's a sign that God is showing us uh, that if we're faithful and obedient to the call, uh, that, that God has put on our lives, that God would begin opening doors that no man can close, that he'll begin to provide things for you you'd never imagine. And so I'm seeing God doing that again and again. 
and it's just a joy. And I, my, my prayer is, is that every one of us experience that uh, so that we can see and know really just how much God loves us. Uh, that we're going to share with you what I believe God is continuing to speak to us in this season as we are in revival continually as God's spirit is in this place. Uh, turn with me to the book of Joshua, Joshua 3. Joshua 3. And when you found it, won't you stand to your feet? As we get ready to read and reverence the word of God, Joshua chapter 3. Now let me begin reading in a New International Version. The word of the Lord says, Now in the morning Joshua and all the Israelites set out from Shittim, and went to the Jordan where they camped before crossing over. After three days, the officers went throughout the camp, giving orders to the people. When you see the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord your God and the priests who are Levites carrying it, you are to move out from your positions and follow it. Then you will know which way to go. Since you have never been this way before, but keep a distance of about a thousand yards between you and the ark. Do not go near it. Joshua told the people, consecrate yourselves for tomorrow. The Lord will do amazing things among you. Joshua said to the priests, take up the ark of the covenant and pass on ahead of the people. So they took it up and went ahead of them. And the Lord said to Joshua today, I will begin to exalt you in the eyes of all Israel so they, begin, so they may know that I'm with you as I was with Moses. May the Lord have a blessing to the reading and hearing of his holy and righteous word. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father in heaven, we thank you so much for what you've already done. You've done enough already to save the entire world but yet there are still some that don't recognize who you are. So God, we pray through the power of the Holy Spirit that you would manifest yourself in this place in such, in such a unique way that those that don't know you in a part of their sin, that they would come asking the eternal question, what must I do to be saved? And we pray for the saved, God, who are afflicted, who are hurting, who are despondent. I pray, God, that the word would uh, minister to them in such a way that they would experience your healing power, that they would experience encouragement, that they would experience your power in their lives in such a fresh way that they will go home different from the way they came in. I pray, God, for that person who's comfortable today, who is sitting on a flowery bed of ease. I pray, God, that you would begin to minister in such a way that they would be charged to be changed that their lives would be wanting to be service-oriented as opposed to me-oriented. I'm celebrating you in advance for what the word is about to do through me. Use me, God, as you see fit. Do with me as you please, that we may give you all the honor, glory, and praise, but that you might receive the blessing. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. This morning, I want to preach from the subject on your mark, get set, go. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, on your mark, get set, go. Amen. We on our way somewhere. It's happened. So we on our way somewhere. Amen. My brothers and sisters, honestly, when you look at your life choices and you look at the choices you've been making, a question I want to raise this morning for your consideration and thought is simply this. When you get to where you're going, where will you be? When you get to where you're going, where will you be? As you look at the choices that you're making and line them up against the dreams that you have, 
the goals that you've set. The question is, when you get to where you're trying to go, exactly where will you be? Where will you be? Because here's something that's interesting because a lot of us have a lot of dreams, a lot of goals, aspirations, lofty goals, high ambitions, but sadly, where we're going contradicts what we're aiming for. Why? Because the choices that we've made don't line up with our dreams. Our decisions don't line up with our destination that we have in mind for ourselves. So I ask the question again, when you get to where you're going, where will you be? Where will you be? Where will you be? And I'm raising this question this morning as we as a church have been focused on the theme, we are Elam 100%. And, and what I want us to think about it. What are the choices that we're making collectively and individually that's going to impact our tomorrow? And as we are looking ahead into the future to plan what is our next steps and looking at our next steps and as you outline where it is that you're trying to go, my brothers and sisters, it is important that you make the right choices because when you make the right choices, it's going to help you to receive what God has for you. As it is much important to make the right choices, now this is where you're going to feel your way and find your way and see your way as to where you're going because of the choices that you're making. Because I've discovered something in this life, an unfortunate mishap, that many of us will not make it to where we're trying to go simply because the choices that we're making contradicts our desired consequences. So again, I raise the question, when you get to where you're going, where exactly will you be? Let, let me put it to you like this. How many of you have had a desire and a great determination uh, to end up in one place, but sadly, you wound up in another place? Let, let, let me see if we can be real with each other this morning because all of us have set out in moving in one direction, but we ended up in a different destination. See, how many different individuals do you know that actually get married with the mindset that they're going to stand at the altar and they're saying that I'm going to end up, even though I'm standing at this altar, that I'm going to end up in divorce one day? No married couple in their right mind stands at the marital altar and says that they're going to get a divorce. But watch this. Divorce does happen. It does happen. Why? Because of some choices people have made along the way that have contradicted the dreams that they had at the marital altar. Nobody ever plans on becoming broke. But yet, as you're looking at me right now, there's a lot of broke people in this place. You didn't plan on being broke. You didn't have no desire to be broke. But stuff happened. Because why? Some decisions were made that you have made a long ago. But yet now you're sitting here today broke. Well, nobody ever plans on being a failure. But yet, all of us have messed up and blown it at one time or another. All of us have failed at one time or another. And so that's why I asked the question, where will you be when you get to where you're trying to go? Because none of us have set out for a negative destination, but every now and then we wind up in a place, being in a place that we did not plan on being in. See, sometimes we end up in the wrong place, not so much because of the decisions, but how we get caught up and carried away in the current of circumstances. Stuff just happens. How many of us have been shifted by the storms of life, the stress of life, and the suffering of life? And, and I don't care who you are, but every now and then we find ourselves in a place where we had not planned on being. Not simply because of bad choices all the time, but sometimes because we've been carried away by the current of our own circumstances. So today I'm dealing with the fact that sometimes we don't know where we're trying to go because the means we take uh, to our, end, our desired ends don't always match. So as soon you what you will discover is that there's no wrong way. There's not a wrong. There's not a wrong way to get to a right place. 
Let me say that again. You will soon discover that there's no wrong way to get to the right place. So today I'm dealing with the important concept of the choices that we make in this life because the choices you make determine your chances. In other words, we always increase your chances to win by the right choices that you make. What I'm simply trying to say is that this day, many of us who are here, we got some people in here that have to know that knows and realizes that I have to trust and pray because the fact is that I'm in church today. It exhibits that I want more for my life than just what the average person wants. Why? Because at 1130 today, you could be laying in your bed right now, home, relaxing, chilling. But you came to church because you came with a word of sense. I will need a word from God. God. Evidently, you want something in your life more than what the average person wants. Evidently, you believe that God has brought you to the right place at the right time to receive a right word to get you in the right place. Please, please, you got to have some direction. Don't be like that lecturer who got in the cab in New York City. He was late because his plane had arrived late at the airport. And once he got into the cab, he told the cab driver, hurry up, drive fast, I'm late. And the cab driver began to drive as fast as he could for 15 minutes. 15 minutes had gone by. And the lecturer asked the cab driver the question, are we there yet? And the cab driver said, I don't know. You never told me where we we're going. Do you know somebody like this? Do you know somebody who's always in a hurry but they ain't going nowhere? They don't know where they are. They're not going anywhere. Just going around in circles and, and I'm simply trying to help you to understand that you're in church today because you believe God has big plans for you. You believe that God has something special for you. Well with that being the case in this life, no wrong way to get to the right place. So therefore my brothers and sisters, we must be sure as we examine our means as we move forward to a desired ends because every time we make a choice within this next year let me give you a piece of information that will help you you need to ask yourself the question does this get me closer to where God is trying to take me and I don't care where you are here's the thing you need to ask yourself the question when you meet that person is you need to say am in dating you are you getting me closer to where God is is trying to take me I don't care what kind of job you have but you need to ask the question is this job taking me closer to where God is trying to take me in other words you need to say listen I ain't got time for no more drama I need I've been doing that all my life there's a time that you got to come to that says I got to make sure everything I'm involved in is getting me closer to where God is trying to take me so please my brothers and sisters examine your choices because because your choices in light of your intended consequences will be determined whether or not you're going to arrive at the place God is trying to take you. That's what brings me to the text this morning. You'll notice in the text that God and Joshua are telling the people, take your mark, get set and go. I bet you didn't see that in the text but it's right there in there. Won't you look with me because see here's the thing they're getting ready to enter into the promised land and when you're getting ready to go into the promised land you have to make sure that you're making the right choices if you want the right consequences. Watch what the text says. The people of God are on the peripheral of the promised land. The people of God are just about ready to cross over into the promised land that God has for them and they are perched in the suburbs of Canaan and they, but hold on one second as they are in the suburbs of the promised land where their promise is about to be fulfilled this is where they soon discover that just as you're about ready to cross over that's when all hell breaks loose I know I got somebody in here that's a pastor I know you write about it isn't it amazing my brothers and sisters that when you're about to realize your dream when you are on the precipice of entering into your promised land when you're about to walk where God is taking you that's when all hell breaks loose in your life and somebody ought to be shouting right there because you're saying pastor you own it because hell has been broken loose in my life I know I must be around the corner and that's what God is speaking see here's the thing you're not getting this the Bible says that they're at the Jordan River but hold on because stuff has gone wrong well what's gone wrong Moses is is dead. 
Now, now hold on for a second. All they've ever known was Moses. Moses, this legendary leader. Moses, the man that brought them through. Moses, that's all they've ever known. He's dead. And, and, I, and I got something for you. Please don't trip too long with the Moses that are not in your life any longer. Because, see, sometimes God puts people in your life to get you to the promised land, but not to get into the promised land with you. Let, let me say that again because somebody missed that. Sometimes God puts people in your life to get you to the promised land, but not in the promised land. Because, see, some people are in your life. They are not going to go into the promised land with you. Why? Because, see, they, they, you spend, see, why are you spending all your time complaining about who's not with you anymore? See, that they're, they're not supposed to be with you anymore. Why? Because because they was just to get you to the promised land, but not in the promised land. Tap your neighbor on the shoulder and say, you just got me to the promised land. You just got me to. That's all that was. You just got me to the promised land. Because sometimes God allows you to go through some stuff and have the right people in your life at the time that you need them. But as soon as the reason and the season is over for their lives in your life, here's what you need to say. Adios amigos. Uh, I don't see, I don't need you anymore. I'm on my way to the promised land. Oh, I'm looking, I'm looking at some people right now who were left by somebody. But God says, don't trip about that. All you need to do is say, listen, I thank God for you. See, they divorced you. No, they didn't divorce you. You just got delivered. See, God says you've been delivered from what your past has been. Why? Because, see, here's the reason why you got delivered. Because you can't bring wilderness Negroes into the promised land. Uh-oh, he's preaching about me right now. Somebody said, why? Because, see, you're bringing relate. You can't bring wilderness relationships into your promised land. Wilderness people can't occupy the promises of God. So Moses is dead, and I'm, I'm not going to trivialize that because that's important for all of us to know because for 40 years, you all, that, that, that this mountain man, Moses, was leading them, this legendary leader now Moses is dead and you can relate to that Moses is dead because last year some Moses in your life is no longer here and they made the transition and it's hard your heart is broken and how do you move forward when Moses is no longer there well let's look at the text because it's right in the text Moses is dead but now God directs them to the Jordan River watch this at flood time. Now, now you may ask the question, what is, what is significant about that? The Bible says the re this was the season when the Jordan River was swelling to overflowing. And the reason that this is important because this is sometime between March and April when the snow from the Mount Her for Mount Hermans have melted and cascade down the mountain until the Jordan River now is overflowing. And Bible scholars say that this is a dangerous and treacherous place. Why? Because the Jordan River is overflowing. It, the slippery slope where can you, the water travels down and the river now is overflowing. Yet it is doing the most inconvenient time that God ordered the steps of the Israelites. Is that not just like God? That God has a strange way of putting us in situations just when we're about to get what God has for us then all of a sudden it seems like it's the most impossible time to receive it see something that's too much too big for me I, all of a sudden God says now go after it wait a minute God this is too much it's overflowing I can't handle it God says if I'm in it you can win it that's what you got to realize if God is in it you can win it even when something is too much too big for you and it confronts you the Bible says that's when God's is shown up in your life when you know that he breaks you through because why God is simply saying on your mark get ready go you, you, you're not getting this just yet see God is simply saying I know it looks bad right now I know the Jordan River looks impossible to cross right now I know that you're facing what you're facing is challenging but God says on your mark get ready 
get set, go. See, it's time to make some choices that is going to increase your chances to have a godly consequence. See, the Bible lets us know that Joshua says to the children of Israel, on your mark, get set go. That's what I'm going to deal with. It, and I ain't going to deal with much else. I'm going to do that real quick and then we out of here. See, everyone in here today, we're getting ready to move to the next phase of ministry. Next phase where God is taking your life. But you have to say, God, I'm ready. On your mark, get set, go. On your mark. So you, I, I know why you ain't got excited just yet because you, you haven't sensed where I'm coming from. I need to let you know that since I'm in it to win it and I understand what is taking place, I got to make sure that I'm starting this race of life in the right lane. See, I need to make sure my starting block is not a stumbling block because, see, God says, on your mark, get set, go. I, I guess you're not familiar with the terms that I'm using, so it's a try term and and I borrowed the subject of my sermon from a simple statement in track that says the statement simply states uh, runners take your mark Th that means when you take your mark that means you got to get ready for the race and then it says set Th that means that you have to have anticipation for the race and then it says go that's when you take off See, then that's what's going to happen this morning because, see, we're coming here, we're getting ready, we're getting ready to get set, and when I get the benediction today, that means go. See, and when, when I say go, it's on like neck bone. When I say go, it's going to be, you need to go into your destiny. Go to where God is taking you. Walk into your dreams. Go and make your life everything that God wants it to be. And, and I hear what you're saying. Well, you're saying, Pastor, I'm not ready yet. I, I, I need to understand how does this thing work? H how does it work? Well, I'm glad you asked. The first thing is getting ready. To, you getting ready to go over the top. The text says, on your mark, that is simply this. You're in a posture of preparation. Because as you're in a posture of preparation, you're preparing for what where God is going to take you and only God knows where. See, the text blows my mind and it messes me up because the Bible says the officers run throughout the camp and they're hollering out at the, to the people saying, y'all go home and get ready because tomorrow God is going to do great things. And see, he says, here's what you got to do. You're going to follow the Ark of the Covenant because you've never gone this way before. You're going to have to be prepared because God is taking you some places where you've never been before. God is taking you into uncharted territory. And the reason I raise that point, my brothers and sisters, I believe that God is taking Elam in uncharted territories. He's taking us in some places we've never been before. He's going to do some things we've never experienced before. But the good news is, is that he let, he's letting us know. Because see, the challenge in order for us to move into uncharted territory is that we have to be willing to leave our comfort zones. Tap your neighbor on the shoulder and say, you're going to have to leave your comfort zone. You're going to have to leave your comfort zone. See, we must be willing to accept some changes. See, change is difficult because most of us don't like change because we like to continue to experience the same old thing. What, 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 what do you mean, Pastor? Well, you, you, you're not getting this. See, too many church people uh, are contented with rerun religion. Y'all going to make me work hard in 1130. See, rerun, I mean, that, see, that, that, here's what rerun. There are many people's lives are one big rerun. In other words, the same thing happened last year, is happening this year, and it's going to happen next year. It's just one big rerun. See, reruns occur during the summer season. See, the rerun is, is going to happen, uh, and what happens is the rerun is the same show that they showed in the previous season. See, a rerun, when the rerun, you see it during the summertime, it's the same characters, it's the same drama, it's the same outcome. Oh, uh, you looking at me like you don't, you don't know what I'm talking about. See, here, here, see somebody saying, you know what, Pastor, go on. And I'm testifying this morning. That's my story because I keep running rerun relationships. I got the same old person, the same characters, the same drama, and the same outcome every time. I'm dog dissed and dismissed. I don't know how I get there, but it's the same old thing. Just one big rerun, one after another. See, this thing of reruns, it gets out of hand. But here's the good news. 
at the end of the summer, that's when the, there's a move to go into a new season. See, all of the networks, they begin to market because a new season is coming. And when a new season is about to dawn, that means there's going to be some, what, new episodes. And since there's new episodes, that means there's some possibility of some new characters. And if there's new characters, that means there's some new drama that's going to take place. What I went through last year, I ain't going through that again. I done been there, done that, got the t-shirt and the ticket, and now I'm on my way out. Why? Because here's what I came to let somebody know. I came to declare to you that the seasons of reruns in your life are over. It's over. You ain't got to deal with that no more. I'm trying to tell you, I'm declaring in the name of Jesus, no more reruns. Tap your neighbor on the shoulder and say, no more reruns. God's about to unleash a brand new season, a new episode, new characters, new drama, new opportunities. Why? Because God is that kind of God. See, here's the deal. See, reruns can only stop when you get to verse 5. Look at verse 5 because here's how reruns stop. The way reruns stop, Joshua says you have to sanctify yourself. Oh, my God. Joshua says you have to consecrate yourself. Joshua says I can't have you bringing your wilderness dirt into the promised land. You got to set yourself apart. See, 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 that, that, I, that's why you didn't say anything. You, 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 you don't know what sanctify means. You, you, you haven't gotten that yet. See, sanctify is an interesting word because it means I got to let some stuff go. See, when, when you're sanctifying yourself, you're setting yourself apart for what you've been set up for by God. Let's see. Here's the thing. You got to let some stuff go. Turn to your neighbor and say, you got to let some stuff go. You got to let some stuff go. See, there's some stuff that you picked up in the wilderness. There's some attitudes that you picked up in the wilderness. There's some emotions that you picked up in the wilderness that you can't take into the promised land. So you got to sanctify yourself. You got to let some stuff go. Uh-oh. I, th I think I, I think I see here. I hear what you're saying. I think I got in your business too quick because somebody said, you, you mean I got to tell them they got to go? You mean they can't stay there anymore? You mean they, you mean they got to get out? Uh, it, it feels good. You mean they got to go? I'm telling you they got to go. You got to sanctify yourself. You got to say, you know what? You, you ain't always been my boo. And God is my boo now. So you got to go. Why? Because you got to sanctify yourself. See, that, that, that means you got to set yourself apart for the purpose that you've been made for. In other words, you got to set yourself apart. Let, let me see if I can help you with this. See, have you ever noticed uh, when the new construction goes up? When a new construction goes up, they always put a fence around that new construction and when they put a fence around the new construction they always put signs on the outside of the fence and they have these words no trespassing no dumping or you'll be fine you see new constructions always sets up boundaries because they say in the new constructions you can't cross this line unless you're going to help to build this thing up and that's what you got to do in your own life you got to say I'm under construction and I got some boundaries around me and you can't get in as a matter of fact you can't dump no trash if you try to bring some of that stuff in my life you can make get fine I'm going to give you a $500 penalty. You can't bring no trash in my life. You got to let yourself know. You got to listen to what God is speaking to you about. Because you're getting ready to go into the promised land. You can't take that trash from the wilderness into the promised land. So sanctify yourself. But not only do you have to do that, you sanctify yourselves. He says, for tomorrow, because I love this, the Lord is getting ready to do some amazing things. See, that, that God is getting ready to do after you set yourself up for preparation for only God knows where, then you must 
state, then you're in a state of anticipation. Watch this for only what God knows what for. See, anticipation, when you are a child of God, and, and please don't miss this, because see, th this is the time in the text that the flood is it's at its highest in the Jordan River. And he says, sanctify yourselves because God is getting ready to do some major stuff in your midst. Watch this. God is getting ready to do something major because I know here right now, I know what you're up against. It's a challenge. But he says, God is getting ready to do some amazing things. Why is it a challenge? Because it's a barrier between where I'm trying to go and what God has set up for me. It's called the Jordan River. In other words, I can't get to where I'm going until I get across this barrier. But God says, I'm getting ready to do some amazing things. You have never been this way before because of what I'm getting ready to do. It's going to blow your mind, but you got to have a spirit of anticipation. In other words, you got to believe that God is getting ready to do something great because God can't move and do something great unless you believe he's going to do something great. See, so many times we settle for less than God's best because we don't believe that God is going to do something great. But I believe that God is getting ready to do something great in this church. I believe that God is going to do something great in my life, but that's not enough for you. You got to believe it for yourself. So go on and be a prophet. I'm going to ordain you today as a prophet and go ahead and prophesy on your own life and just simply repeat these words and simply say, I'm getting ready to do something great. I'm getting ready. You got to believe it in your spirit. I'm getting ready to do something great. God is going to do something great through me. Why? Because I know I'm destined for greatness because I serve a great God. I'm anticipating for God to break through all the stuff that's been blocking me. I know I'm right about it. Why? Because God says, on your mark, get set. Watch me now. Here's the last thing. Go. Turn your, tell your neighbor, go. You getting ready to get out. That's what we getting ready to do. We getting ready to go. The text says go. That means I'm getting ready to actualize God's supernatural activity in my life. That means when I leave this place, I'm not going to leave the same way I came in. Why? Because I'm getting ready to go somewhere. I don't know about you, but I can't stay where I've been. I can't have another rerun. I got to go where God is leading me. Do you see what the text says? The text says the priests were told to go ahead and step into the Jordan. And before God made a way, watch this. God told them to be obedient. And just as their feet entered into the water, that's when the water started to split apart. And the people crossed over on dry ground. Well, why is that important? Because God told them to move. And they moved. And God provided and made a way out of no way. How many people know that God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that you could ever imagine? That's the kind of God we serve. He's able to do. Well, how do you know he's able? Well, I was talking with a friend of mine the other day and as we were talking, he said, Vincent, man, we've been talking a long time. I'm about to raise on up out of here. And just as he said that the Holy Spirit quickened my spirit and said, did you just hear what he said. He said I'm about to raise on up out of here. I see I know why you ain't saying anything just yet. You don't understand the interpretation that I have. Let me interpret you to you what raise up on out of here means. It simply means I was once down but I'm now no longer down. I'm about to raise up out of here. I don't know where you are but I came by on my way to heaven to let you know you're about to raise up out of here. How do you know? I'm about to raise up out of here because greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. I'm about to raise on up out of here because I'm forgetting those things which are behind and I'm pressing toward the mark of the high calling of Christ Jesus. I'm about to raise on up out of here because even the youth shall faint. Young men shall utterly fall but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up on wings like eagles. 
They shall run and not get weary. They shall walk and not faint. I'm about to raise on up out of here. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. I'm about to raise on up out of here. Why? Because God has great things in store for me. I'm about to raise on up out of here. Do you want to rise with me? Do you want to rise with me? I don't want to rise by myself. I need some help in here. If you're going to rise with me, won't you stand to your feet and rise on up? Won't you rise on up? Why? Because God is that kind of God. You can't keep a good man down. You can't keep a good woman down. Well, how do you know? Because one dark Friday, he hung, bled, and died. They put him in a bottle tomb. But Jesus said, hold on. I'm getting ready to rise up out of here. And on the third day, he got up with all power in his hand. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. I'm about to raise on up out of here. I don't know about you, but I'm not going to have another rerun. It's a new season. It's a new day. It's a new opportunity for you to have a better life. And how does that happen? It happens because you make the right choices. And when you make the right choices, you increase your chances. And when you increase your chances, you're getting ready to win it. And you're not in it to lose, you're in it to win. Losing is not an option. So you got to make the right choices. I didn't know you were going to be here today. But God knew you were going to be here. And he tailor-made this word just for you. Because he wanted you to hear that you have the power in your hand to determine your destiny based on what God has already set up for you. There's going to be some challenges, but you got to make up in your mind that I'm not going to quit, that I'm going all the way because God has already set me up. He said on your mark, get set, go. You've been commissioned to be a winner. You've been commissioned to be the head and not to, t- not to tell. You've been commissioned to be blessed going in the city and coming out of the city. Because you're anointed by God. Because that anointing is on your life. You don't have to settle for where you've been. You can say this is a new season. But how does that begin? It begins with your journey of faith. That as you walk down this aisle, what you're saying is I'm ready for a new lease on life. I'm ready to turn my life over to God. I'm ready to see my life transformed. I'm tired of the way it used to be. I'm ready to see something different. Well, how does that happen? It begins with the walk of faith. And that is step outside the aisle, walk down, give your hand to the counselor, but give your heart to God. I know that you're here. God is ministering right now. Come up, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. It's a new season. It's a new season. It's a new season. It is a new season. God is doing it. Is there another? You ought to come while you have a chance. Come on. Thank you, my brother. Come on. God is working. You ought to come. Is there another? You ought to come while you have a chance. This is your moment. This is your time. This is your season. You ought to come. You ought to come. God is speaking to you right now. It's time to go. It's time for you to make that move. You need to do it while you have a chance. You need to increase your odds to win. Make the right choice. Make it today. Yes. Take that step of faith. Yes. Yes, it is. Hallelujah. It's so good to know.
You ought to come. You ought to make that move right now. Do you know Jesus? Does he live in your heart? That's the question. Oh, do you know if you don't know him, you need to take that step down the aisle. If you don't have a personal relationship, today would be a good day. You ought to come. Just 20 more seconds. This is your time. This is your season. Just 10 more seconds. Just make that decision. Don't procrastinate. Don't hesitate. Just walk and watch God begin to work. Just as you start walking. It ain't going to happen until you start walking. As you start walking, that's when God will begin to work because he's working on your faith. I feel you in here struggling. You ought to come because that struggle is so hard for you. But I want to let you know things will not change until you begin to change. You can't expect to go into a new season playing those same old reruns in your mind. God is saying right now it's your season to move. But you have to walk into where God is trying to take you. You won't be carried into the promised land. They walked into the promised land and here's what was miraculous about it bible says that the river was over flooding and when they walked across their feet didn't get stuck in any mud and here's what somebody needs to know and this is how you know god is speaking to you because he's opening up some doors and he's going to let you know that when you begin to walk in it you ain't going to have to suffer in it that he's going to allow you to walk on across on the miracle of his mercy but you got to take that step just a few more seconds. Just a few more seconds. I feel you in here struggling. I want to pray for you in the name of Jesus. I pray for my brother. I pray for my sister. God, right now, they are struggling to just step outside themselves. They're afraid to leave their comfort zone. But I pray your power, your love, because you didn't give us a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. And I pray for them right now. That God, even as I'm praying, they are already moving and nudging, knowing that they need to step outside the, uh, their, to the aisle to walk down, to give their hand to the counselor, to give their heart to you. I pray for them in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Let's give God some praise for he's worthy to be praised. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord.